Hello everyone, for First Updates Now, I'm Tyler Olds and you're watching Behind the Bumpers. It's a fun show where we dive deeper in the robots, what makes them work, and check them out. And today I'm here with team number 2491, No Mythic, coming out of St. Paul, Minnesota. No Mythic dates back to the 2008 season, but has really started to hit a great stride starting in 2015, uh, and has since won two regionals, including the 2020 Northern Lights Regional, where they were the number one seed, amongst some other awards. Uh, this year they do have a 2021 robot that they built and they took third in their state in the Hyperdrive Challenge. And today I'm here with Owen, Elisa, and Lando. And we're going to be uh, diving a bit more into uh, this robot. Uh, looking at their 2020 robot a little bit as well too. What changed between all that? Really excited to talk to this team. All here coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker is a leading medical device company and is looking for those in first to join their team as interns or for a great career. Come join a company that will actively support you being in first at careers.stryker.com. If you're on an FRC or FTC team and you're currently meeting safely in person and have a functional robot, we'd love to have you on our Behind the Bots or Behind the Bumper segments. Go ahead and reach out to us on any of our social channels, on Discord, or send us an email at admin at firstupdatesnow.com and let's get your team scheduled to be on First Updates Now. So Owen, we're going to be starting off here with your 2021 robot. Uh, love to see the rebuilds and what's been uh, changed uh, between the two robots. You guys had a fantastic 2020 robot. I know the season got cut short, but you were the number one seed, won the regional you were at, and now you built a 2021 robot here. So uh, talk to me a little bit more uh, about that. We're going to be starting off with your drive, uh, going into your electronics and into your intake. Uh, but I'd love to hear uh, what you've done with this robot and then some of the changes from the 2020 machine as well. Absolutely, yeah. So to start off, we uh, did actually use the same drivetrain as last year. Um, and the thing kind of unique about it, um, you can see a little bit on the screen right here now, is we have one belt per side. Uh, so we have the pulleys on each wheel, and then this yellow line shows where that belt uh, path goes. We have these uh, metal tensioners, um, and that just allows for a lot of weight and space saving. Uh, you can see it on our robot here now. We have the belt here. Um, it's an eight-wheel Colson robot, um, Colson drive, with a little drop center. Um, we have four Falcons, and uh, yeah, so it's you know, incredibly robust, made of sheet metal, uh, and served us really well this year. And I know um, one of the things you want to show off uh, was your electronics as well, too, underneath. So can we take a look at the underbelly for that? Yeah, absolutely. Let me lift it up a bit. <laughs> Give us a second. Uh, it is very ugly right now because it's covered in tape. Wow, it's really covered in tape. Um, that, that's the underbelly yeah. of your uh, aesthetic style so there, these, huh? Yeah. Um, so we have these little clips here. here this go. is going great. Um, and then we have the electronics in here uh, with the electronics panel kind of back there. Um, and this just um, was to make sure we had space for the spin dexer. Uh, and it served us really well. We haven't had really many electronics problems. So you let's know, get that back in there. It's yep. interesting that you have on there. Um, we've interviewed a couple other teams this year that have been mounting their electronics upside down. And it looks like that you've done that with some of yours as well. Do you mind uh, just discussing a little bit about that and how that's been benefiting your team? Uh, yeah. So I think for us, we had like one little electronics panel. Oh, that didn't work. <laughs> that we put um, near the back of the robot. Uh, and that just really allowed us to have a lot more space atop the robot, especially for the Spindexer. Um, and also keep the electronics away from hazards. Uh, and we do have, like, like I showed before, some panels to cover it on the bottom. Well, let's start moving into that power cell journey as we go through. And starting off with your intake, uh, looks like a pretty fundamental change between your 2021 and 2020. So love to see them both and talking about some of the changes that you made for that. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so starting off, uh, a little demonstration of the intake. Uh, can you extend it? So we have uh, these poly cords that pick them up like that. Um, yeah, so it's made of polycarb on the side, uh, and that's just to make sure that if we ever get hit, um, that it just deflects and does, doesn't actually break the intake. Uh, then we have these metal tubes that give the intake a lot of rigidity. Um, and then we actually uh, pick up the power cells with these poly cords between the two rollers. Uh, they're powered off of a Neo 550 on a um, one to five reduction. And it extends on this, uh, you can see here, we have these little slots. So this top piece 
rides down this slot, and then we have these arm, this arm down here, uh, and that works as kind of a, a four-bar system. I can move it up a little bit, and then uh, we actually uh, don't, we can't pull the intake back once we extend it. Uh, so at the start of the match, it's like this, um, and then to extend it, we roll the, in don't extend it, uh, we roll the intake, and then it rolls on these little um, blocks here, and you can get a close-up there, and then it pulls it out with the help of these little, um, what's it, surgical tubing there. And this is a big improvement over last year's intake. Uh, first off, it is a lot lighter, um, which has helped a lot, uh, especially with the you know, pneumatics. Um, that has saved us a lot of weight in the robot. Um, but also last year, you can see we have these four rollers with one of them on like a little spring. And this worked really well for picking up, but it was just really big, clunky, and kind of over-engineered. And we just, uh, we like our new, um, what's it, uh, really simplistic intake. And they work pretty much the same uh, as well as each other. Um, last year, we had this kind of virtual four bar, and it's just complex and caused some problems. And this year, uh, it's a lot simpler. Yeah, and a lot cleaner too. Really, is you know what it looks on that. Um, one thing to ask you on that, um, from your decision to uh, create it so it comes out but is not able to come back in uh, during a match. Now, I, I know that you know this is a twenty twenty one robot built for an inf infinite recharge at home, but I do see five power cells in your bot, so I'm going to infer that it can also compete uh, for the main infinite recharge challenge. So, any concerns in regards to like if you get hit by a robot or anything like that, or is that part of having that polycarb and that flexibility in it? Yeah, I think the polycarb. Um really is there to you know absorb impacts and make sure that doesn't break obviously if a robot came like sidelining us and hitting that intake really hard it would probably fall off um but i think for most of the scenarios we thought of uh it would survive and um, we saw other teams do this as well and they didn't have too many problems so uh, we weren't too concerned and on top of that uh it's not too hard to swap out an intake it's really just um this clevis pin and this up here, and then we could swap out an entire intake. So say we could bring an extra one to competition in case one breaks. Yeah, I love the, the thought process on that of, of saying, hey, you know, we need to make it so we can swap out uh, easily enough. I really like that. Well, uh, Owen, thanks a lot for talking to us about those features on your robot. We're going to be going over to Elisa next, who's going to be talking about the Spindexer on your robot. Always excited to hear about uh, Spindexers and how they work. Uh, and then uh, after that, we'll be going into uh, the outtake and the shooter as well, too. But uh, Elisa, tell us more about the Spindexer, how it works, uh, and then uh, you know how has this been either iterated upon or if you you know if this is the first time you've done a Spindexer, what was it truly like? Um, well, this is the first time we did a spin, done a Spindexer. It is made out of quarter inch Lexan, so pretty similar to the intake. And we have uh, a pulley system under the uh, Spindexer plate that is attached to four V bearings. And then if you come over here, there is, it is connected to this uh, Neo 550. And um, it's a lot different from our from last year's robot it's loose contact rather than close contact and we feel it has been a lot better and has not had any jammings whatsoever uh can, can you talk a little bit about the uh on the 2020 robot? can we take a look at that real quick and just see what what that was like um and then you know going from a you know kind of more traditional hopper system as it looks like um, was there any uh, difficulties creating a Spindexer for the first time? I, I know you said you had a lot of success, but how about some of the process getting there as well, too? Any, any good lessons learned that maybe share with other teams? Um, we used an X-Carve to cut out the Lexan panels, and it was a pretty simple design process. We knew we had wanted to make a Spindexer for a while now, and we just took this opportunity with this weird uh, year to make it. And we went through a few different designs. We had um, holes in the Spindexer to hold balls, but we then decided that a simple circular plate with a hole in the middle and some uh, bars would be perfect. You totally just answered my question I was going to ask because a lot of, you're right, a lot of Spindexers we have seen 
uh, do tend to have the holes uh, cut out from the landing. So how how do the balls actually move? Like, is this whole thing just completely spinning like a carousel? Or how does it, can you actually show us how that works? Uh, yeah. Um, so we're going to re-intake some balls and go. So you saw how it went back and forth like that? Yeah. That is a technique we uh, call the washing machine because it <laughs> agitates like a washing machine and we help get the ball settled into uh, the spindexer from there. I, I love that. That's so cool. Um, you know, I, I, I'm i trying to jog, jog, jog my mind if I've seen other teams who have done something exactly like what you have and nobody's really coming to mind. Uh, so really neat. I, I like that. I love the, the washing machine technique that you do. And I like that you don't have the holes because a lot of teams that we've seen – you know they have the whole, you know they have the holes cut out, but then it takes more time for those uh, power cells to actually nestle in the place uh, for it. So yeah, really cool uh, with that, Elisa. Thank you so much for showing us that. Uh, we're going to go yeah. into uh, Lando next. Is going to be talking about the uh, the outtake, which is the process of getting it into the shooter, uh, and then the shooter itself too, Lando. Let's hear more about it. Yeah. So basically, one of the challenges for uh, building our spindexer was how do we get the balls from it into the shooter, and our solution is what we call the outtake which basically has this one wheel down here that you can kind of see, um, which is an omni wheel. So the balls, as they're moving across, don't get um, too messed up by it. But then once we start spinning it, they'll spin and ride up this side and up into these other wheels, which are kind of hard to see. But essentially, that just brings it directly up and back into the shooter. Um, and then you can see here we also have these green side wheels to sort of center the ball into the shooter because we had some issues with the balls hitting the sides of the shooter and flying off to one side or the other. So that's what these are for. Um, yeah, and then once we get into the shooter, you can see here we, this is a drastic improvement from last year's robot. Our last shooter was quite consistent, so we took all of the same qual good qualities from that uh, and we added a few new functionalities. So. The first main thing is we now have this top wheel to add a little bit more inertia to the ball. You can see on the side it's belted directly to, uh, belted and geared directly to the, the main flywheel. Uh, so this stops some of the spin, not all of it, but it also just adds quite a lot more inertia to each shot, making them go a little bit straighter. Um, the other thing is we have this brass flywheel on one side. Last year we used two steel flywheels, one on each side. But this one's geared three to one to the, uh, to the rest of the shooter, which basically gives us more rotational inertia for less weight. How, how much um, does it actually weigh? The flywheel, how much does it weigh? Um, I'm going to go with like kind of three pounds. Uh, we got it from Swerve Drive Specialties. Uh, thank you. And it, um, it has a pocket in the middle. It weighs a little bit less than our five pound ones last year. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so around three pounds. Sure. Fair enough. And looking, you know, from, from your shooter, I mean, obviously it looks very clean on it. Um, you know, you had a turret, turret for both of these robots on it. Um, anything that's been improved from the turret itself? We actually don't have a turret on either robot. Oh, so, I'm sorry. Um, an adjustable hood. My apologies. Right. An adjustable hood is one thing we added to the 2021 robot. This robot only shot one angle, which we um, uh, used for a very consistent shot from the trench. This one, we wanted to add um, any, other, any other functionality so we can shoot from any part of the field. Our hood works on this giant 3D printed dovetail, um, which is basically what's keeping all of the balls uh, in contact with the flywheel. And then uh, it's powered all by these two servos on the top here, um, which are really easy to program. You can just tell, tell them to go to a position, and they'll go to it. Uh, so this allows us to shoot from any part of the field uh, up close like this or angled all the way up from really far away. Um, and yeah. For your uh, shooter stuff, how did, can you talk a little bit about the programming process of getting you know, the, the hood at the right angles and stuff? What are you actually using to uh, determine what angle you need to shoot at? Uh, so kind of it was mostly trial and error. We set positions on the servos and saw where that led. And then we sort of just found which, we, well, we programmed it so that, I'm, I'm not on the programming team, so I don't really know how it works, but we programmed it so that we can set specific angles of the shooter, of 
And then we tested all those angles from different positions on the field and decided which ones we wanted um, to have access to. Yeah. So we have four main um, positions, low, medium, high, medium, high. Well, uh, 2491 No Mythic, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us uh, about your team and your robot. Uh, it's incredible to see how far your team has come uh, in just a few short years as you're starting to create some really top tier robots. So I uh, love the aesthetic design of, of your robots I see every year and, and love the functionality of it. So thanks for taking the time to show us your bot. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. We would like to thank our friends at Striker for supporting this video. Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with a company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support Fun by joining Fun Nation. Click the Join button and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.